Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop How to Cut Out an Image tutorial, we'll be using the Pen tool to make very careful selections, allowing us to then cut images out of their background and use them as separate images. For instance, here we go, there is the whole image cut out of that background. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click on the like button and also subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's get to it. There are lots of different ways of cutting images out of backgrounds and it depends upon the particular picture as to what is the right way to go. For instance, on this one there's a real strong contrast up here against the edge of the wing and the background. So you could use a magic wand in here or something else for a very easy selection. But right down in here and down here, over in here, some of those spots, there's not much contrast between the foreground and the background. So some of those faster tools really won't work. So you need to use a different tool to be able to do this kind of a careful selection to create a very nice layer mask, just like we have here. Now, a couple of tools can do that. One is the polygonal lasso tool, which is right up here. Now, the problem with this one is that you have to do it perfect the first time you're going through it because you can't go back and adjust it or fix it. That's the real benefit of using the pen tool right here is you can go back and you can adjust and fix, make an absolutely perfect path and then convert that path into a selection. That's the whole reason for using the pen tool. It's really the best way to go. Now I can't show you my doing this one. This took me about an hour to do a real careful selection on this. I won't be showing you that, but I'll show you all the techniques and we'll come back and see how I applied those on this image. I'll use this simple image to demonstrate the technique. Nice round curves and so forth in here makes it much easier to do. Let's now just zoom in a little bit on this. I'll zoom in one, you know, a couple of clicks. There we go. So it's pretty well maximized. Now you can go in much, much closer and we'll do that when we're making our adjustments. Now I like to start someplace where it's easy to spot like this little corner right here. And the first thing I'll do is I'll just put in my basic curve. So I'll click once here. I'll leave this as a corner and then I'll come out just a little ways, click and pull, and then just work around and put in a few of these points in here and just come around and begin setting up the basic path. Now I'm putting the points fairly close together because that will give me an easier time later on when I come back to adjust these things. Now I can make a curve, obviously a path with fewer points on it, but it's more difficult to fine tune with a, a small number of points than it is with a large number of points or more points. So I tend to come in and just do quite a few and just work around. Don't worry about being exact at this point. We're going to be adjusting this. All we're doing is putting in our basic points and making the path. Once the path's done, the second step is to clean the path up and that's where the real power comes in of using the pen tool. So you can just a click and a drag and a click and a drag just like that and that makes those curves. Now down here I'm going to do a click and up a little bit, click and, and a pull and just do a few of those along the top and then come down right back where I started and that completes the path. Now we can go in and clean this path up. So I'll just zoom in. We'll start at the very top up here. And using the direct selection tool, I can come in here now and take these, move the path points around, and then adjust the controls here to get the curve just where I want. I can pull the curves in or out. You can kind of see the curve in there. There it is. You can kind of see where that curve is. So just a matter of adjusting the control handles until the curve is right where you want or you know moving your point around and this again is the real power behind using this technique is that you can come in and really carefully control this now sometimes like right up here I want to have this down a little bit and let me pull that out just a touch put right there 
So in this instance, I don't want to have these straight across, so I'm going to change my tool over here to the Convert Point tool. I'm going to grab this control handle here and pull that one down. So it kind of curves up, and then I have a different curve coming out of this side. Okay, back over to our Direct Select, and let's just adjust the curves in here. This all looks pretty good. If you can't really see your curve, just, just pull it out like that so you can see where that curve is, is hitting. And again, just work back and forth on these and take the curve right where you want it. Okay, this needs to come up just a bit. And then it's a matter now of going through and cleaning up these points and cleaning up the curves coming out of the points. You see here for the real fine detail where you get that curve exact, you do want to have more points instead of less points. So don't worry about putting in too many. It's just going to make it easier if you have more. And then we just work our way around the whole image here. Kind of fine tuning, adjusting our positions, fine tuning and adjusting the curve in here with the control handle. Again, you know, there's the curve on that path. Now we'll just work clear around until we have this nice and tight against the edge. That looks pretty good as is. And this coming down. So you can see it's not doesn't really take that long, but it depends upon the complexity of the image. This is an easy image, so it's fairly easy to do this curve. A more complex image just takes more time. And that's what I had on the butterfly. Take a lot longer because there are a lot of little curves in there to handle. See here another reason to have more points is so that when I'm zoomed in, I can see the points both sides of the one that I'm working on. That really helps you out. You really want to be able to see a couple curves or a couple of your points, you know, one on either side when you're doing this. So having more points really helps out. It also, again, allows you to come in and do these little fine adjustments, a little, little bit of a bump right there, and having a point in there helps that out, makes it easier. Now, if I didn't have a point and I still wanted to adjust that, I could simply add in another point. We'll do that up here in just a little bit. I'll find a spot. We'll add in an additional point just to have one. Okay, so just a matter of just going through and making little tweaks until you get it exactly where you want it. And this is the kind of thing that you can't really do with a tool like the Polygonal Lasso tool, which is a great tool for making selections. And sometimes, let's say you're working with the Photoshop Elements program, that's all you have. You don't have paths over there, so you have to do the best you can, and that's a great tool for making selections. But it doesn't have the level of fine-tuning that you can do here with the Path tool. You can't go back and you can't adjust or correct it very easily. There are you know ways of kind of working around that, but it's, it's not very good. It isn't at all as powerful as making a perfectly created path. Okay, let's just, just say right up in here that I wanted to have another point that I wasn't happy with this. Let's say this is up here and I want to have a point down here. Easy to do, just go back to the pen tool and click on the line where you want that point and there's your new point. Now if you're using an older version of Photoshop, I'm using Photoshop CC 2017 right now, using an older version, then the pen tool may not give you that automatic new point. Just come down here to the Add Anchor Point tool. Same thing. Okay, let's just continue up and finish this off. We're just about there, actually getting very close. And we'll then double check and we should be able to make our selection at that point. Now making the selection from a path is, is very easy. You just have to have you know, a nice clean path to begin with, that's really where the whole trick comes in. Make a nice path and everything else will follow along. Okay, we're right back at the top just about now. Just a couple little tweaks here. And I think we'll have this thing finished. There's the stem again, so you can move your points back and forth if you need to as well. That can help you to just kind of fine tune where your path is. Okay, that's the path. 
Let's now fit this back on screen again. You can see the path right here. Now to make a selection out of this is easy to do. Just go back to the Direct Select tool, right click inside the path, and choose Make Selection. I normally have my feathering set at one pixel, just kind of softens the edge up a little bit. Choose OK. There's my selection. Now all you have to do is just to make a layer mask from that selection. Click on the new layer mask button. There's the layer mask and there's our perfect selection just like that. So that's how you cut an object out of a background using the path tool. Let's go back and take a look now at the butterfly. I used the exact same technique here. The only difference is that I had more points to deal with because it's a more complex shape. Let me just go back up to the path here and we'll bring our path up. You can see there we go. There's the little points in there. Our control handle and it just took more points to follow along this more complex curve but using the exact same technique that we used on the apple. Right here I have a corner and then curves coming out of the corner. This was done by putting in a curve section and then just using that convert point tool to pull the control handles out. So I have my control handles going off in different directions. So there it is. And let's just put this back to fit on screen. And that's how you can use the path tool to make perfect cutout images. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.